my god, we're live. We're live. Hello, everyone. It's happening. <laughs> um, happy holidays, everyone. This is the DCC Christmas holiday special. We're so excited to have you all here. Um, Jeff, what are your Christmas plans? Well, I'm currently sitting here on the Yule log. It's feeling nice and toasty, very comfortable here in the fireplace. Um, but for my actual Christmas plans, I'm not doing anything. Um, you know, this whole pandemic lockdown thing makes me not really want to be around a lot of people. So my partner and I are just kind of hanging out. Um, on Saturday, Dina Martina, who's this drag queen that I love, is doing a streaming holiday special. Um, so we'll we'll... Uh, we, we bought our tickets for that. Um, and our friend Dave is going to make us some food and bring it by. But other than that, not That's a damn awesome. thing. <laughs> How about you, Haley? Uh, my plans are some Christmas Zooms and maybe an hour with one side of my family if we're feeling risky. I'm obviously safe. As as many people know, I already had the, the vid. I had the COVID. So it is mostly depending on how the rest of my family feels since I'm pretty pretty safe but uh, I forgot to mention I'm here with my my obvious co-host and friend Jeff Goad um, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm here today with Haley Sketch and please please forgive the massive amounts of dandruff that Haley and I have today yeah, it is. <laughs> I can see like it's all over the camera like please like forgive us for this like we we I swear we used our head and shoulders like it should be good you'd think the hat would stop it but it's just not <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, and I think our first group is going to be the wonderful Spellburn crew, uh, and once uh, I think Jeff and I are ready, uh, you will hear some more awesome Christmas rock from Grim Christmas, who was kind enough to let us use their music, um, and we will switch to having them on the screen. Yes, thank you, Grim Christmas, and we'll be right back. All right, we've got the Spellburn folks with us. Yes, welcome guys. Merry Christmas, happy holidays. Hello, hello. <laughs> welcome so to our Yule log. Yes, welcome to the welcome to the fire. Um, <laughs> what are you guys doing for Christmas this year? Uh, Julian? I, uh, I, I'm really more of a Hanukkah guy. And uh, so mostly I've been trying not to burn down the house. The cat jumped <laughs> On the counter the other day and almost knocked over all the whole candle thing that was uh a little it was a little dangerous but um we're fairly safe with that stuff and um not a lot going on and you know pretty quiet my the christmas side of my family is uh you know we're all locked down and stuff and so i, I don't know you know last few years we have had a little bit of a tradition of playing AD and D on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day night or one of those nights. So maybe we'll be doing a little bit of that. Sounds fun. That's a great tradition to have. I wish we could do that. I wish I could coax my family into doing that. Yeah, it, it was my wife went away on, on a ski trip around that time two years in a row and we just played and then I just made that AD and D night. So yeah, it's been uh, it's been fun. We might get some of that going. That's awesome. Jen, how about you? Um, one of our Christmas traditions for the past 15 years or so has been to go to Disney, you know, in, in some capacity, since we're fairly close to Orlando. And we were looking at it going, oh, I don't know. Uh, but it turns out that one of our pr favorite places to stay over there is maxing out at like 10% capacity. So there's virtually nobody in the building. We're like, sold. I don't even <laughs> care if we go to a park. 
(laughs) get me out of this little I I mean the office that I've yeah (laughs) so yeah I'm I'm sure a lot of people can commiserate um it'll be nice to get like a full night's sleep for a change (laughs) that's awesome though it's good to get out once in a while and in safe ways yeah it'll be the longest car ride we've had since Gen Con wow that's a while (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah Yeah. (laughs) lucky me I get lots of car trips and going to school and back but (laughs) (laughs) It's a blessing and a curse, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> tell well, ourselves awesome, that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Spellburn crew, I did have a question for the three of you since I am not a Spellburn crew. How have you guys done over a hundred episodes and still you have amazing new topics that people are fascinated to watch? Well, it, first yeah. of all, the trick is to farm it out to the, uh, the AAA crew. Um, <laughs> No, so we got them to do the first 40 or so. They kind of warmed up the crowd. They were the opening act. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then we decided to come in finally around uh, 40. I don't know. Jen came in a lot earlier than me, I think. Yeah, Jen, you were like 16, maybe? Uh, no, I think it was, uh, t- shoot, I always forget. Either 22 or 24. It was the okay. Chain Coffin episode. Okay, I know mm. I'm 48. I was, <laughs> I was 44. 44. And because uh, that was with my pal Brendan, who's long overdue to return. Yeah. So, uh, you know, yeah, I don't know. You just have to you have to pick people that you like to hang out with. But don't tell him I said that. <laughs> and then um, he, he, he means put up with <laughs> people, people you can tolerate for long amounts of time. For me, well, one thing I think that helps a lot is um, when I first joined the Spellburn crew, I noticed like there was a lot of like emails back and forth about. I don't know, should we do this for a topic? I don't know, maybe we should do this. And I ended up proposing, how about this? How about every episode, we just take turns being the producer of that episode. So each each episode, one of us is the person who chooses the topic. If that topic involves a guest, we invite the guest. We're the voice of that episode and we write the show notes for it. So, so we know who to blame for the bad episodes we can go through and pick. Exactly. If there's an episode no you don't like and you hear <laughs> you my like. voice at the beginning, you know it's my fault. If you hear Jen or Julian's voice at the beginning, you know it's their fault. All right, guys, you heard it here first. You know exactly who to blame for the episodes you don't like. <laughs> yeah. Mine wasn't the last mailbag. <laughs> if, you Although, hear, if you hear an episode you don't like and you hear Jeff's voice, blame Jeff. That's, that's, uh, that's Oh, you mean if you hear my voice at all? Yeah, at all. <laughs> I did have the pleasure of being on the last episode, so you can also blame me for that one if that one isn't good. <laughs> and for the record, by last episode, Haley means next episode. Yeah, next episode. I apologize to all of it. <laughs> if you're out there and you're watching this and you're also a listener of Spellburn, in the episode we recorded, we are actively pitching this, but I, I, I didn't edit this episode yet. So we're pitching something that by the time you listen to it will have already have happened. So go rewatch. <laughs> you, you, can, uh, you can fix it in post, right, Jeff? Oh yeah. <laughs> you'll just right hear a cut over of my voice. will be like, so on, and then you'll just cut over. <laughs> in the past on Good Man Games Official Twitch. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> but that's awesome. I know for my dad, every our, every car ride we're on, Spellburn is on. It is a staple in our household. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Monkeys on my windshield. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's awesome. It's so good to talk to you guys and hear from you. And, and also, uh, I'd love to throw out that if anybody in the chat has any questions for us, we, we, are, we do have yeah. our amazing producer, Thorne Thompson, hanging out in the background um, uh, monitoring the chat. And if anything interesting comes along, he's going to go ahead and let us know, AKA we're also partly looking at ourselves. <laughs> we all have it pulled up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello. So if you've got any questions for us, please let us know. Yes, I forgot to mention that. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Um, Carmen says I age backwards, which is very lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Name uh, the best Christmas yeah. present you have received up to this point. Hmm. I'm not, I, it's Christmas. I'm getting it this year, so I'm not supposed to talk about it yet, but I am getting a link map specifically for my room to put up. And I'm very, mm-hmm. very excited about that. We were shopping in the, in the game store and I was like, you know, hey, dad, uh, we have a link map that's, you know, obviously still in box, but definitely the link <laughs> map I'm going to get. <laughs> awesome. I approve. <laughs> 
this is not really an answer to the question, but it reminds me of kind of a silly story. I remember I was like, I think eight or nine years old and I had a dream and it was the night before Christmas. And I had a dream that for Christmas, I went downstairs and I opened up my presents and one of my presents was a big red ruby. And then when I woke up in the morning, I was so sad to realize that that had just been a dream and I didn't have a giant ruby. (laughs) <laughs> that would be a power move for Christmas. Would you get giant Ruby? How about you? <laughs> yeah, that's uh that's yeah. Oh, the dreams of little gay boys. <laughs> <laughs> Dreaming of getting big rubies for Christmas. <laughs> I mean, I don't know that that's necessarily exclusive, but <laughs> nice. Tony, Tony, Tony's trying to get my Marvel geek thing going in the chat. <laughs> Doug or not comment. I, that's pretty good. Um, or you could save the. Uh, what's doesn't Doctor Strange have? Well, no, he refers to the same ruby, doesn't he? Um, sorry, by the rings of Ragador, I might have been confused. But anyway. Wait, so what's Juggernaut's deal with the ruby? Oh, the ruby is the... Does it, and does it explain why Juggernaut doesn't have a neck? Is that yeah, because it, it, the ruby gives him his invulnerable power, and then he, yeah, yeah. The, the Crimson Gem of Citorak. Not to All be right. confused with the Crimson Bands of Citorak, uh, which is which I actually ended up casting in a spell not long ago in my buddy uh, Matt Rose's Dead Halt game, which is one of the many weird games I've been playing recently. And not um, to be confused with Ruby Tuesdays. <laughs> is, and isn't or that Rudy Giuliani. From an old D&D cover. <coughs> uh, yeah, oh, well, if that, you mean the eye and the players, maybe? I don't, I don't know about that. I'm trying to think of the best Christmas gift I ever got, and... Um, I don't know, you know, I, I, I can't think of one that really stands out. I, I didn't have great Christmases probably, but. Um, so what about the best Hanukkah present? Thanks, I'm, I'm trying, no. Well, I think my great presents have always been my birthday, but um, you know, when I was a kid getting the, um, I think I did get the DMG, like when I, that would be a thing, right? I think I got like when I was 12, I got the DMG for Christmas, the Gygax. Um, actual DMG that um, I believe that was if not then it was Star Wars figures because there was nothing better than when you know at a certain age getting Star Wars guys when you were like 10. Jen how about you? Um, I'm scanning back and there's been like geez 26 this will be our our either 26th or 27th Christmas together Um, and if I were to pick like one year, Bob would get mad and say, well, what about this other year when I got you this? <laughs> so <laughs> I can already uh, hear my parents in my ear, not the Hamilton tickets. I, uh, really? <laughs> yeah. Um, I would say uh, probably the year that uh, he managed to track down a green garnet and have it set in a necklace for me. Ooh. Because garnets being my, my birthstone, but green being my favorite color, et cetera. So yeah, I'm not usually a jewelry kind of girl. You guys know that about me, but um, yeah, that that was pretty special. And And I've actually, I now do remember actually what my real answer to this question is, which is Christmas of 1993. I got the the Twin Peaks VHS complete collection. I was 13 years old and my brain exploded. I was so (laughs) thrilled. And I watched the crap out of those tapes. I was obsessed with that show when I was like 13, 14, 15 years. I mean, I still am. I've gone to, I went to a Twin Peaks convention in 1995 and I went to another one in 2015. Um, And I still, Twin Peaks The Return is the greatest piece of media, period. There is no piece of media I enjoy more than Twin Peaks The Return. But uh, but yes, but that started my love with that incredible um, box set. Oh, and somebody's asking me what a Twin Peaks convention is like. First off, I would like to point out, if you ever run into me in person and you want to see this picture, I will be happy to show you on my phone. Yes, somebody's saying episode eight. They know what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> if somebody sees, sees me in person, on my phone, I have a picture of me from a Twin Peaks convention where we went to the location where Laura Palmer's body washes up onto the shore wrapped in plastic. 
and I laid there on the shore wrapped in plastic. So I have a photo of me wrapped in plastic in the location yes. where Laura Palmer's body washed up. That's awesome. That's commitment. <laughs> yes, Bonner, <laughs> I am old enough to have watched VHS. I'm 40 years old. I was born in 1980. <laughs> All right. Well, I hate to I hate to cut us off, but we do have a next group that is going to hop on at some point. And uh, thank you guys so much for coming. And I really, um, really appreciated you guys coming to talk holidays. Of course. Good to see um, you guys again. And next year, uh, you know, obviously there's this mystery episode of Spellburn yet to be recorded or yet to be edited. Uh, there will, of course, continue to be Spellburn and Sanctum Secorum has got a couple in the can now too. So yes. Right, More DCC everywhere. <laughs> and Haley, you you got a question in the chat. Oh, I did. I just I just left the chat. Um, that, I'll okay. read it for you. Yeah, I'll put you on the spot. If you don't have time to answer, you can do it later. But they said, Haley, if you could run any DCC adventure for any group of people, which and for whom? Oh, that's. I might need some. I might have to think about that in our next uh, over our next little uh, break when we sh transition. I will answer that one with the next when the next group starts. I got to think about that. It's okay awesome. when, <laughs> when you pick us. When you pick us, it won't be embarrassing. <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> we'll watch the chat though, just to make sure. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you guys so much. Love you guys. Merry Christmas. Bye, friendos. Happy.
everyone. You might recognize this crew. Uh, the night might seem a little weird, but this is our Blades Against Bandvis crew here to wish everyone a happy holidays and say hello. Hi. Hey, everybody. <laughs> so to answer the last question, if I had to pick a group to run um, and any module, I would have to go with Sailors because it is the first one that I, I played in in an actual game and my dad ran it. And I think if I had to pick a group... I would pick, I'm going to say I used to play with some neighbor kids before we played, before DCC came out when I was like six, we played together and they were guys from across the street and my brother and I, I would love to get that old group together because we don't talk anymore and just say hi and run them through some DCC probably. That's awesome. I love it. I would pick the same adventure, but I would run it for Adam, Eve, and the snake. <laughs> <laughs> just so that like we can like have it around from the very beginning. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> Same, but with Lilith. Yes, and Lilith. That's right. Thank you, Adam, Eve, the snake, and of course, and Lilith will be the will be the judge. Judge Lilith will run it. <laughs> uh, I, yeah. I'm sorry, Julian. I did betray you. <laughs> I feel I like I've already run. Oh, our, our chat is asking for a um, a ho 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 from you, complete with belly shaking. Who are they asking that from? From Tim. <laughs> oh, it's Santa appeared on it too. That was. <laughs> 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 All right, ask me. I would, like to go that though. I think I've already played my like. People have always like, if you could play one game or run one game, I think I've already had my once in a lifetime awesome game, and Haley was in it. At Gary Con, when I ran uh, Acting Up in Lankmar, it was probably the best game I've ever run. That was uh, a great game. It was just like nonstop laughter. Um, it was with a great crew because I had the brink. I had the brink of men, right? Both I had Mike Bolum, I had uh, David, um, and I had Weird Dave Coulson, who I, I don't even really know him that well, but I just remember his name was Weird Dave, and that was an amazing game. And maybe one day I'll run it for the Blades crew because it is such a good adventure it's like one of the most i don't know just kind of all around fun adventures is that the one where i lit the bar on fire because because it wasn't moving fast enough because there was a there was a lankmar game where we couldn't make up our minds and so i just went to the corner of the bar we were in and started a fire no that was so <laughs> acting up is when you have to guard the uh oh the that's theater. right yeah. i remember that well, you lit, i'm pretty sure walls. you lit that you lit that one on fire as well though so yeah i definitely did that's a pattern of mine <laughs> yeah all right. Uh, anyway, guys, let's go through Christmas plans. I would love to hear, or holiday plans, uh, what everyone's up to. <laughs> Brendan, <laughs> Brendan, as our as our leader, yeah, you go Brendan. first. <laughs> well, uh, you know, uh, like every, like I think like everybody's sensible. Uh, we're staying home and uh, staying careful. We're going to zoom with my folks. We're going to drop presents off over for my folks and for my sister and everybody beforehand. But uh, it's just gonna be me and uh, Lori, and then uh, New Year's Eve. Uh, I'm actually gonna be on right here on the Goodman Games official YouTube channel. Uh, we are going to ring in New Year's Eve uh, in Lake Geneva. So we're gonna, um, you know, uh, we'll be right here for that. So uh, you know, tune in, and uh, but, you know, we, we we have our holiday traditions. We're gonna do uh, we, we watch all of our Christmas movies. We 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 listen to a lot of Christmas music. We've already been you know doing that. And, set my cards out it's been fun it's been you know so I'm, I'm trying to have as normal a christmas as i can given the circumstances that's awesome all right who's next who wants to go next i'll get i'll get mine out of the way all right <laughs> pretty much nothing <laughs> everything got canceled my sister canceled she rented an rv she was going to come down from uh the bay area and uh but because of the lockdown it's getting really bad in california it just doesn't make any it's not right yeah. and uh, i think everyone's gonna be cool with it even my mom and dad uh because we made it through thanksgiving and we're fine so we could do another holiday it's fine we're just gonna have to hopefully really crazy next year it'll be fun next year yeah Ooh, yeah. favorite christmas movie they want to know yeah mm. all right so i started this thing this year where i consider i consider uh john carpenter's the thing a christmas it, movie because it has it, snow in it so that's my favorite that's legit <laughs> yes. that's <a> good one. <laughs> Uh, Gremlins, 100%. Best yeah. Christmas movie ever. Thank you, Carmen. <laughs> I'm 100% with you on that. Well, our uh, every Christmas, like our, our Christmas movies include 
Uh, we watch the Patrick Stewart version of A Christmas Carol. We watch uh, Grumpy Cat's Worst Christmas Ever, and uh, which is you know just like you'd expect. It's I, I you know I, I, it's an event for us. And then we watch Herman the Fifth, which has to take Crispin's Day speech in it. So we kind of that's our you know. I love it. That's inspiring me. I feel like this Christmas, I'm now going to watch the original Black Christmas, the ridiculous remake of Black Christmas, and then I will watch the Joan Collins segment of the Tales from the Crypt movie uh, where she murders her husband, but then the evil Santa Claus is trying to break in and murder her, but she can't call the police because she's just murdered her own husband. Um, hey. That might be my my Christmas triple feature. There's what a is remake what? of Black Christmas? There yeah. is, and it is dreadful but like it's amazingly bad like one of the things that makes makes the original black christmas so amazing is that you know nothing about who the killer is or why they're doing what they're doing the 2006 remake takes that and completely undoes it and makes basically 80 of the 90 minutes of the movie slight hyperbole um, about the backstory of who this person is who's trying to murder all these people. It's ridiculous and amazing. Just do it again last year, Jeff? Wasn't there the, like another recent remake? I think, I'll have to look it up again, but I, I could have sworn they just, oh. just did another one. My boyfriend from across the room is giving a thumbs up. So <laughs> I am assuming that means he agrees with you. I, I did not know about that. Or yeah, if I, did, I forgot about it. That's the one I thought you were talking about when you said the remake. I didn't realize there oh. was one. And, uh, also, real quick, while I've got Tim and uh, Tim and Brendan here, have you guys received this in the mail yet? Yes. No. It's Joey's uh, darkest oh. dice. I got mine in the mail it's a trick today. Yeah. Yeah. Joey Royale put out this. It's a D and D game in oh, yeah. chick track form with um, with uh, Brad McDevitt art inside. Yeah. Perfect. It's incredible. <laughs> I love this so much. It's everywhere. Yes, yeah, Joey's amazing. Joey's one of the coolest dudes. He's and, like uh, a hidden treasure in the DCC community. Yeah. There are so many yeah, yeah. people like that that I'm just like, why do I not talk to you more? <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> well, I know him from what? Drinking and Dragons. What? Exactly. <laughs> Which uh, I used to do. Um, I, I'm sure if you Google Darkest Dice, you can find, but I, I don't know where. I got it from the Kickstarter. Yeah, I don't know if he is doing another print run outside the Kickstarter. I'm, I know he's putting the PDF up on drive through um, But yeah, I know like the printing on it was like not super easy to do. Like he actually had to bring like a real chick track into like the like some local <laughs> printer and be like, I want this printed just like this. Um, well, I wish I had been there for that. Uh, yeah. Oh so Joey, so also Joey, um, he, our friendship is a DCC story too, though, because I met him running a road crew game and through the DCC RPG rocks group, he saw that he saw my announcement and was like, Hey man, leave a spot for me. Um, and then I did. And he, we, be, that's when we became best friends, uh, <laughs> brothers. We did karate in the garage. <laughs> um, that's awesome. Uh, back to Christmas movies. If I had to pick, my normal would be a Christmas story. But last night I just watched a movie called Toys of Terror or Terror of Toys or something like that. Horrible. My favorite kind of movie, horrible sci-fi movie. <laughs> Best kind of movie out there is horrible sci-fi movie. And we just watched that. And that might take the cake, considering I had to walk out halfway through because the acting was so bad. <laughs> <laughs> you really Mine's have to stick sad. with that, though. Yeah, you just come out the other side. It's it's a process. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But and Chat's we... recommending Silent Night, Deadly Night Part Two. Oh, I have not seen Part oh, Two. I've seen Part One. I've seen the first one. <laughs> I have not seen Part Two. I'm down for a horror movie. I think, I'm really I think excited I'm about this. this. <laughs> <laughs> we watched. We finally saw Black Christmas for the first time. Like actually, like a couple months, like around Halloween. I want to say. Um, but now I, I'm desperate to watch the remake, this terrible remake that's out there. That's like, that sounds like multitudes of fun. <laughs> Didn't you say you just watched Christmas Evil as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I don't it. know that I've seen that one. I mean, it's, I, I'll tell you what, Christmas Evil is apparently John Waters' favorite movie or favorite Christmas movie. Okay. Is that what he said? And uh, it's, it's like, you know, there's, there's nothing like it. It's really, 
exceptional. Uh, I really liked Rare Exports. Did you guys see that? Oh yeah, I no, did. Nice. Yes. Yeah. It's like the yeah. it's about like um, these kids. Oh. I don't really want to spoil, but it has to do with like Santa Clauses slash elves yeah. type things. Yeah. Like, oh uh, yeah, it's like it's Swedish? like hunting yeah, Santa yeah, Clauses. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I saw that one. Yeah, yeah, that, that is yeah. good. Yeah. That's a good one. I like I like the monster Santa Claus movies yeah. for sure. I think we. I mean, can you think of it? He's terrifying. <laughs> it is a little creepy. He sees you when you're sleeping. But we Die Hard's my favorite. Plans. By the way. We missed some Christmas plans with Carmen and Tim. I believe we're still waiting on holiday plans from you guys. My holiday plans are sad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I'm alone. Uh, not alone. Uh, it, it's going to be different. I'm going to send out holiday. I'm going to make holiday cookies and send them out a little late. Uh, just to like avoid the postal rush and um, yeah, Christmas isn't usually my jam, so it's okay. I'm just not really close region-wise to anyone right now. Yeah. Christmas also, I really feel like we've neglected the Peanuts Christmas movie. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> sure. I just like worm that one in just out of tradition. Should we all do a little Peanuts dance real quick? that was great that worked out way better than i expected (laughs) i think because we all heard the song in our heads (laughs) and we had a hundred percent buy-in everybody did it immediately i love it Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to being able to travel again and see everyone. But I know, right? <clears throat> yeah, seriously. Like even as an introvert, like enough is enough. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, that'll come soon enough. We just have to like wait it out and keep everyone safe. And Chad yeah. is telling us that John Waters' number one movie of the year is a movie called Butt Boy. And I will say I have seen Butt Boy, and Butt is Boy it? is fantastic. <laughs> It is absolutely worth watching. And I'm really glad to hear that that is John Waters' number one movie of the year because it's great. <laughs> it's like you got John Waters' personal stamp of approval. Yeah. It's, it's, like it's a movie about things. a man who compulsively puts everything in his butt, but like it goes long, like goes, but it goes far beyond the point of like realism to the point where like he's like putting like locations into his butt. <laughs> it's a butt of holding. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. But it also becomes like real dark and gets like semi like becomes almost weirdly like an allegory for like addiction. Um, it's really interesting. Oh my god. I'm gonna add that to the list. <laughs> Tim, how about your holiday plans? <laughs> Just doing the typical dad stuff, right? I got hanging out with the girls, we're not going anywhere. It's gonna be probably like just like how Thanksgiving was weirdly quiet for us because we didn't have mm-hmm. to go to four different places, right? So yeah. This will be the first time I think in 20 something years that we're just staying home. Yeah. But it's cool. Cause like, you know, we're, I still got the kids here and it's not like it's, we're like, you know, yeah. an old couple by ourselves type thing. We have all the fun of Christmas watching them open presents and stuff. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, and then later that night, I'll then I'll hail Saturnalia and I'll run naked through the woods c- crying out to Bacchus. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> ah, the usual got it <laughs> saturnalia is the best holiday yeah. you know uh i think nerf wars would be a really great uh tradition to institute this year because like you can do it socially distanced oh yeah. like just idea. shoot your friends and neighbors with nerf we guns we do have a lot of nerf guns in my basement mm. i just have to surprise the family not tell them that that's what we're doing yes. start shooting people. <laughs> now, surprise them. Thing just hide thing them around like the house about... go ahead go ahead Doug. Oh, I was going to say, just hide uh, guns around the house yes. and then just like pull them out of the closet and start shooting. As people discover them in the cushions, they'll get it. What was the name of that movie in the 80s where they played like that? Um... Tag the assassination game? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Something like that. I love that this we turned used... into movie review with the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We used to play tag in, uh, in uh, I think it was just called Assassin. We, we played in high school. Killer. I, killer yeah i was terrible at it uh but uh i you know i got killed every year really quickly but <laughs> was that fun that's awesome <laughs> that called gotcha. yeah it is gotcha gotcha i remember how so, awesome the comments say gotcha 
one of the things we do each week is we on Blades Against Bandwidth is we 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 bring in a special guest each week. So I want to know. I'm curious. What is you? Who is your dream special guest? If you could have anybody come on to Blades Against Bandwidth that week, um, from anybody alive or dead, real or fictitious, whatever you want to do, take your answer however you want to take it. Who are you bringing on? Got my answer in a minute, but he will never ever. My brother, I would love to see Connor return from the dead. <laughs> I just asked him right before this. I was like, Connor, what are you doing Sunday? And he's like, I'm too busy for you. Leave me alone. <laughs> so huh? one day, if I keep begging, I might just get a return from the grave of the other sketch. How does he respond to peer pressure? <laughs> <laughs> not well, not well. <laughs> uh, bribes? Also not well. He's stubborn, man. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, like, th- like the scope of that is so large. If it could be anyone, that's that. Yeah. That's kind of hard. But, um, but uh, Jay Garrick, the, Jay Garrick is the, he's like considered the father of modern acting. And I'd like to see how that person would do in a role playing game situation. He's like <laughs> post Shakespeare, but pre Victorian. He's like in that that period, like that four hundred year period there in the middle somewhere. And he was like apparently like he's the reason that that acting looks like it does today, and it's just people standing there yelling lines out, you know. And um, so if I could, yeah, maybe you like to see, all right, all right you're, you're that good an actor? Eh, let's see you play Septus. Come on. <laughs> yeah. you can, you know. I'm thinking George Carlin. Oh, good answer. Ooh, it'd, be yeah. like, it'd be stressful, but really funny. Yeah. And, uh, he'd be a good I, 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 go in, I would go in a similar direction. I'm thinking Joan Rivers. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I went Joan Rivers playing Septus. That'd be amazing. Be fun. <laughs> Maybe like Keanu. I like like that's what kind of like actors like I'm, I'm just love Keanu Reeves because he seems to be like such a cool, yeah. amazing human yes. being. So maybe maybe him. Oh, maybe maybe Shia um, LaBeouf. That'd be an interesting one. Yes, he would be <laughs> definitely interesting. <laughs> yeah, I want to see if his attention span can focus on this. Um, Joan <laughs> said, um, I think she suggested uh, Joe Goodman, and we've tried. Believe me. Yeah. <laughs> um his excuse always is you know and his, it's not really an excuse but he's got young kids and it's hard for him and he said maybe one day but we have tried um is also brendan we bring up and we've got so f- the best kept secret it's not really a secret but brendan right now he and i are playing in a dcc game with errol otis which is like mind-blowing he's cool to, like, to sit down and look at Errol Otis, you know, sitting across from me on a Zoom Zoom screen. Um, it's That's like, it. I don't know, like, I don't know, like, it's weird to get starstruck when it comes to, like, nerd games, but, like, it's still, right? Like, it's yeah. it's Errol Otis, and, but he does play, yeah. and maybe we can get him. Yeah, and you're, like, starstruck, but you're also, like, dude, if you cannot roll some dice and hit something here, I swear to God, <laughs> you know? Like, you're still, you're still playing, you know what I mean? So... <laughs> I'm kidding. Okay, the, only, the only time I've actually been starstruck is I had the opportunity, I, I was working at a bookstore in Colorado Springs and Neil Gaiman came to a bookstore in Denver and the, the owner of the bookstore was like, you can take the day off, just take like this big stack of books up there for him to sign. And I was like, no, because if I have to look him in the face, I will hyperventilate and pass out. <laughs> and like, I've met celebrities and that's never happened, but just like, yeah, I, I, I can't be cool around that's Gaiman. Fun. I've been in a room with Neil Gaiman um, when um, when Stephen Merritt from Magnetic Fields turned fifty. He threw he he did a two night um, residency at the Brooklyn Academy of Music, where he wrote fifty songs about each year of his life. Performed the first twenty five one night and the second twenty five the next night, and I went both nights. And I went with my friend Kelly, who's like old time friends with a bunch of the members of like with Stephen Merritt and a bunch of the members of Magnetic Fields. So I went backstage and I'm like hanging out backstage after the concert. And Neil Gaiman was there because apparently Neil Gaiman worked with Stephen Merritt to do Coraline because Stephen Merritt did the music for Coraline. So Neil Gaiman was just like randomly hanging out backstage. And I'm just like, hi. <laughs> <laughs> he found a book for me, say. I met oh, him at, uh, he, yeah, he came to Amazon and he signed, a, like, and signed books at Amazon and he signed a copy of uh, Stardust for me. And like, I was like, I, I told him like how much I love the Ramadan issue of Star, of, uh, of, uh, Sandman or, uh, Sandman. Yeah. yeah. And he was like, oh, we, we actually chatted about it for a minute. He was so cool. Like he was like the coolest. So 
that's funny because Carmen, so before we even met then, we had like a two or three degree of separation because Amanda Palmer used to do, we had the Water Fire in Providence, which is kind of like an artsy um, like festival night that they do like on Saturdays during in a city. And she used to do this thing where she would pose as a statue and then she would just move, you know what I mean? But she'd look, <laughs> and I know, I know like they're what, they're divorced or separated now, but still it's like, so I met Amanda Palmer she married Neil Gaiman, and you guys have on the other end. <laughs> Amazing. I love Amanda Palmer. Yeah. All right, yeah. Guys, I might have to. We're running a little over on our time here, so I'm going to say thank you guys so much for okay. joining us. Thank you. It was good to see you all midweek. Happy good holidays. Yeah. I'm sure I'll see you guys. You soon. early on Sunday, kids. Yes, early on right. Sunday. <laughs> love. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you. Bye, Very happy holidays. Bye, Bye friends. Uh, next up, we will have Stefan Pogue. Uh, draw I'm hanging out. Talking. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
All right, so we are set up and ready for our next guest. But first, Haley and I wanted to play a quick game of Guess What Christmas Song is Stuck in Our Head. Um, and Haley and I do not know the answer to each other's. Yeah. So So it's anyone's guess. <laughs> I'm curious, Haley, do you have any guesses for what Christmas song is stuck in my head? I, I feel like it's one that I, I don't know because I don't listen, like I was saying earlier, I don't listen to a lot of Christmas music. I'm more of an alt rock person. But if I had to guess, I feel like it's the one you mentioned, Dolly Parton. Or Candy Christmas? Yeah. Am I, I, I love that song. That song is amazing, but that is not the Christmas song stuck oh. in my head. All right. Well, there goes my guess, guys. The Christmas <laughs> song that's stuck in my head is Destiny's Child's Eight Days of Christmas. <laughs> And it's so amazing. Um, it's the, at one point they're saying, on the, so I just pulled up the lyrics. On the eighth day of Christmas, my baby gave to me a pair, a pair of Chloe shades and a diamond belly ring. <laughs> <laughs> and it just goes on like that. But Haley, I'm going to guess the one that's stuck in your head is Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas is You. That is correct. Yeah, actually. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> I Mariah Carey Christmas songs are the only ones that get stuck in my head. Um, <laughs> but now that we've played that fun game, we have our wonderful guest, Stefan, here uh, working on a drawing that will soon pop up on screen. And you guys will get to watch him work on that while we talk Christmas and, uh, and uh, fun holiday plans and Christmas songs that are stuck in our heads. <laughs> Perfect. So any moment now, the picture should be queued up we can see mr pogue mid mid drawing a big delicious tongue <laughs> sticking out of what i'm assuming is going to be some kind of a gingerbread man or something i don't know <laughs> it's christmas oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes <laughs> actually they can i think right oh but but they can hear stefan right Okay. So, Stefan, if you'd like to say hello. Yeah. I, I, hello. Um, I, I am not drawing what Thorin said. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Thorin whispered in our ears that the audience could not hear. Correct. Uh, so, <laughs> Stefan, the thing that Thorin said was not actually audible to the, the, the general public. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> how, how are your holidays going? Any fun plans? Any exciting uh, things in the works? Uh, are you asking me? Yes, yes. <laughs> um, I, I, uh, I don't really have any specific holiday plans. Um, we're going to uh, stay home and um, uh, we don't have a tree yet. I have to get a tree of some kind. I think I'm going to get a little, um, what are they called? You know, they're rosemary trees. Mm. That's what I'm going to do. That's me. How about you guys? Well, I'm going to have a lovely Zoom Christmas with one side of the family. At least that's what I've heard. I'm not really kept in the loop of family plans. It's usually, Haley, we're doing this. And then I just get ready and go do that. Um, but on one side, I am going to actually get to see my family for an hour with masks and distancing and safety. And uh, yeah, I'm very excited for that. I haven't seen anyone since, you know, this summer before all of this started or last summer. So it's very exciting. Yeah. How about you, Jeff? Well, um, first off, I want to say that we've got um, our chat is saying that this is one person in chat thinking this is Krampus. Another person saying it's the lead singer from Kiss. <laughs> um, and then somebody else is saying that you make this look way too easy. But um, but yes, so for me, I've got the Dina Martina Christmas holiday show that's going to be streaming that I bought my tickets for and I'm very excited about. Other than that, I'll probably just be watching horror movies and hanging out at home. That's always a good Christmas. Oddly, horror movies are a great Christmas like thing to thing to do. I don't know, watching like the Krampus movie or like I was talking about earlier, Toys of Terror or like anything like that, just like bad sci-fi movies, great Christmas thing to watch. <laughs> and I agree with the chat. Stefan does make this look so easy, and if I tried to do this, this would come out looking horrific. I think it would be pretty fun to um, um, next time have um, his drawing up and then also a close up on a piece of paper while me and Haley try to mimic what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> I could not, I literally, like the curve, the first curve could not do it. Just <laughs> my hand doesn't work. 
So this, this, I, I kind of cheat a little bit. You probably can't see it, but there's a very pale outline that I am using as a guide. Uh, so I'm not. Oh no, I don't see that. I don't. Yeah. Yeah. So there's this. This is a blue pencil. It's a very pale blue, and if I make marks on it, you probably can't see it, but I can. So uh, there's my secret. That does explain <laughs> why it looks a little easier. I mean, still, even the blue pencil outline, I'm sure I could not get um, get down. I, I thought you were going to say, I don't know if you can see it, but I'm actually just tracing a picture that's underneath it. <laughs> 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 exactly. <laughs> it's connect the dots. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, so good. I've done that know. before. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only way I can draw is through tracing. All my, my, I had to do VAT in high school. All my art projects were, they're like, oh, put a picture and trace it. And I was like, this is, this is my specialty. I can do that. Well, I actually do VAT. very coincidentally have a piece of art within arm's reach of something that I've done myself. Here is um, a painting that I painted. Let me turn off my, my background image just for a moment so that I can um, show you this properly. But um, in 2004, I did this lovely painting of Condoleezza Rice. Oh, wow. You <laughs> <laughs> look like her. You have, you have captured Condi there. <laughs> uh, really quick, I would like to introduce uh, my special guest that is on camera with me, my, my lovely father. Uh, is, would you like to say Merry Christmas? Here, you can have my other headphone if you would like to hear. Well, it was just in your ear. Yes, it was. Enjoy. <laughs> um, my lovely father, if you'd like to say Happy Happy Holidays. Hello, everyone. Happy Holidays. Uh, we happy Holidays to you. Brought him as, brought him as a special guest. Um, <laughs> he is a hey, special Jan. guest. Um, uh, special. So. <laughs> yeah, but to answer an earlier stuff. question, uh, Stefan, VAT is my school's visual art and technology class. So lots of computer drawing and Photoshop and things. It was an actually okay. really fun, fun class to take. The art gene, that does sound was, cool. uh, the art gene never came in very strong in the sketch. <laughs> yeah, it's not one that is kept often. <laughs> and Jim, which Destiny's Child Christmas song is stuck in your head? Um, I don't. Um, <laughs> 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 the fact that I knew what song you were talking about is a little frightening to me. Um, <laughs> No, I boy, Christmas songs. Uh, probably Peanuts. The the because you guys all just did the dance on Blades dance. Against Bandit, <laughs> and and though the song never was on, uh, I think it was Carmen who said and was right. It was all the same song was all in our head. So that's uh, the Vince Guaraldi uh, is one of my favorite, uh, <laughs> even non Christmas. <laughs> Uh, even yeah, <laughs> Julian says more of a TLC I'm guy. More of a TLC guy. <laughs> <laughs> um. That Vince Guaraldi Christmas album, I'll listen to that all year long because that's just some great uh, jazz work right there. I just noticed something in the chat that I feel the need to point out. You see what that one says right there? Would you like to read that one for the, the audience? Wow. The less famous The less famous sketch. sketch. Uh, no, I, I love to make fun of him and tell him that he's not the reason I'm still in gaming, even though he definitely is. <laughs> uh jen i miss you guys too i i came uh, very close to pulling the trigger on uh jumping in a game um i think it was it might have been last friday uh but once again something came up so um connor let's see i'm trying to read these connor yeah. got a drug yeah connor um for those of you who saw the picture i posted on on the dcc rocks uh community uh, thing from way back when I think it was actually the year after DCC was released so it might have been 2013 um, back in those days uh, uh, Doug wasn't quite so busy so we could just you know we had a lot of his time I, we could we could just hang out with Doug all the time because I like to brag about this and when I was in eighth grade I had a full arm cast because I, I broke this knuckle so I got a full arm cast and on that arm cast is hand original Doug Kovacs artwork on the, the palm of it because I got him to sign it and do a little artwork on it. And yes, I do still yeah, have we the do cast. Still, we had, when, <laughs> when they, were, when they removed asked, the cast, we were like, you have to be you have very to go on the sides of it how and you cut this cast cut off this because off. we want to keep that, that artwork. So we still have it. Yeah. And theoretically, anytime she's in a game uh, at a convention, um, 
she can she could pull that cask out and it there is a plus out, one there's luck. a plus one luck on it. <laughs> but i don't carry it around because of the smell usually <laughs> um yes i am so amazed at this just watching it actually play out yeah this is really stunning yeah <laughs> Now, Stefan, are you somebody who like you've just been drawing your whole life and you've always been doing this? Or is this something that like you specifically you're like, I want to like get good at this? Uh, a little of both, actually. You know, like it's something I always did because it entertained me. Um, and that's one of the things that I like about drawing is that like you can. I mean, I guess it's like a discipline like music. You can always learn new things. Mm -hmm. um, so I am not, however, at all talented at music. I, I'm not quite tone deaf, but I have no sense of rhythm. So, you know, you have a my creative Stephen. systems are limited. Okay. Yeah, and Stefan, we've got a question from the chat. Haley, do you want to yeah, take that? Uh, did you game before becoming a TTRPG artist, or was it something that just happened, like you were drawing stuff like this and it worked, or were you a gamer before this? Um, I, I uh, the 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 uh, I drew before I gamed, and I always drew things like monsters and things like that. So when I discovered D&D, uh, &D, I was just like, oh, this is all the things I like. <laughs> and they're That's all in one place. So um, I That's guess awesome. the answer then is yes. Yeah, so it's like a mutual, you were drawing beforehand and it happened to line up and, and then you found gaming and it just worked. Yes. That's awesome. Yes. And are I you still kind of a pretty active gamer or? Uh, not as much as I used, you know. Like when I was in junior high, I was, I was pretty obsessed, but yeah. um, then, you know, like what happens is you, um, I guess, you know, you have to get a job and things like that. And so that kind of interferes yeah. a little Stupid bit. Stupid life. <laughs> yeah, you know, the, the, the teachers in school get mad at you if you're just, you know, Oh, but I'm writing my adventure for tonight. Uh, they don't. They don't like that. So. I oh, I just wrote them right in class. That didn't make them very happy either. But. <laughs> I can attest to that. Teachers still do not like when you do this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I still remember being. I think I was 14 years old, and I got Saturday school, um, which I was really excited about because I was like envisioning like the Breakfast Club or something, and. Um, <laughs> And I had just purchased uh, Vampire the Masquerade, that book. Mm -hmm. And I spent the entire, that entire Saturday, like I think I was in there for like four hours and I just spent the entire day just like reading the Vampire the Masquerade book. And I don't know, I loved it. <laughs> it jokes on you. This isn't a punishment. This is reading time. <laughs> yeah. Real quick FOMO note. Um, because nobody else can see what's going on with our producer's camera except me and Haley. But um, Thorin was just getting some really adorable floofy loving from this gorgeous cat. And uh, they were giving each other kisses and it was very, very sweet. <laughs> and it made my heart very warm. What is his name? Her name is Cersei. Okay, so we just saw a really lovely cameo from Cersei that only me and Haley and Jim got to appreciate. So I apologize <laughs> to the rest of you for even bringing this up. But Stefan, we've got another question from the um, from the audience. Uh, do you want to take it, Haley? Sure. Uh, who is your favorite non-gaming related artist? And do you have a favorite TSR era artist? Uh, my favorite non-gaming related artist Boy, that's a hard one. I really like um, kind of like uh, these uh, 16th century, 15th century Europeans like uh, Hieronymus Bosch and Albrecht Durer. And they, you know, you can kind of see it because they draw a lot of stuff that's kind of like this. Um, but uh, my favorite TSR era artist would be be either uh, Dave Trumpier or um, Errol Otis. Uh, you were right with the first one. <laughs> I was right. so much about art. <laughs> Trampers. 
look, I'll go pull the shelf book off the shelf if you want, <laughs> and I'll show you the picture that made it all fall in line for me. Trampier is for me the the, the top of the peak for the old TSR era stuff. Yeah. So, when, what's your favorite picture that you're thinking of? Is it oh, I, one that people would have seen? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The 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 cover of the um, of the player's handbook um, just kind of locked everything in for me. It was so perfect, um, and particularly when you realize that you know if you open the book and lay it flat, that the whole cover, the wraparound, is one big picture, and it's spectacular. Yeah, that is that is uh, hard to top. I also really like the drawings he did in the uh, monster manual, like the full page of the people looking at the treasure. Yes, yeah, yeah. that one is so good. Those like three faces that are just kind of glowing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. like the light work is really cool on that one. Yeah, I, I didn't get a lot into the art as a younger person, um, but it it uh, as it's funny because every time I pointed at a picture and said, yeah, that's the one I really like here, it was always a Trampier picture. So he was just always my favorite. I mean, I, not that I have anything against Errol Lotus. Cause we're, 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 <laughs> no, and, and that's, that's where we like see that it really is like, it's all so subjective. Cause for me, like Errol Lotus is absolutely like the top of like the TSR era artists for me. Trampier is great, but like Errol Otis's stuff really just like, like it, it it rings something in me that just like really resonates so it's cool Stefan that like you're kind of bridging the um the gap between these two very resonant artists oh thank you and stopping Jeff and I from having a feud because <laughs> <laughs> I know how those feuds go as Haley pointed out uh I went through um all 106 uh, episodes of Spellburn for for the uh, over the last two and a half months, and I'm up to episode like five in Sanctum right now. Uh, so I know about your feuds. It's, <laughs> it's Gage, by the way, Jeff. Gage. <laughs> and right. when you finish up with Sanctum Secorum, you can then go uh, listen to all of the Appendix N book club if you'd like. Yep, yep. I'm working my way through them all. Every so. car ride. Every car ride. <laughs> <laughs> so it is a. Book. As a podcaster, these these quarantine times are probably pretty good for you, right? Um, well, yes and no. The the yes would be um, I was uh, laid off from my job, which meant I had a lot more free time <laughs> to work on podcasts. Uh, um, okay, <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that. No, that's that's all right. Um, I wouldn't joke around about it if 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 it actually like upset me. Um. And and like I've, I'm I'm employed again, but um, but also I would say the no aspect of it is I did all of my um, podcast listening in my daily commutes, and now I don't really have daily commutes anymore. So because of that, although it's not interfering with my ability to produce podcasts, I'm not listening to any of the podcasts that I used to love and used to be a part of my regular daily routine. Like I had all these like RPG and murder podcasts that I'd listened to. And my RPG and murder podcasts aren't, aren't a part of my life anymore. I'm a big murder podcast person. Gotta, gotta get all that creepy life in there. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I love my true crime. Yep. Love listening to horrific stories about the awful things humans do to other humans. Yes. And then you think about small it. towns where everybody thinks it's small safe. towns. We never had to lock our doors. That might be your first problem. <laughs> um, <laughs> Stefan, I have a question for you. So uh -huh. you, you, when you sat down to do this, did you have the idea in your head? You knew what you were going to do. Um, or did you, did you just kind of start something and just let it flow from there? I, I'm curious. No, I, 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 I picked, um, I was uh, coming to do this, uh, and I thought, oh, I got to do something Christmassy. So, so then I, I every year I send out a, uh, a Krampus Halloween card. Yeah, yeah. I mean Christmas card. Sorry, Halloween. Well, all the holidays are the same. <laughs> same difference. Um, and and I just I I sent them to the printer recently, and I just got them back, and they came back, and they're like, I ordered the wrong size. They're like this big. <laughs> so I have to do them again. Um, so I'm just thinking about how I blew Christmas this year. 
<laughs> oh no. That's that's why Krampus is <laughs> now kind of building on that question. Do you feel like you usually have an idea of what the finished product looks like before you start it? Or is it or or is it something that becomes apparent to you as you're working on it, what is kind of emerging in the art? Um probably both because you 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 usually start off you know for 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 things that i do for example for goodman um it'll be you know you have to sort of go with whatever is is the the, the subject is predetermined right so i can't just draw whatever i want it has to relate to whatever the publication is. Um, but it's also like the way I see it before I even start drawing it, uh, usually there are kind of technical problems that crop up. Like for instance, in this one, I kind of feel like I messed these horns up. Like they really should be more like that, you know? Huh. So, you know, I, I, I'm just going to live with it because, because it's pen, but, and it's not, you know, it's not for anything other than just my amusement, but, you know, you sort of figure things out as you go along and you're kind of like, well, that doesn't quite, you know, it's like editing a sentence if you write it. Mm -hmm. I guess that's what I'd compare it to. That's amazing to me. I love that, you know, when I draw something, I draw like a little line. I'm like, that's not right. And then this to me would be like the best thing I had ever created. And you're still oh, finding yeah. errors in it because the art process is just never ending. <laughs> now, Stefan, do you like the freedom that comes from having kind of a, a light touch in terms of art direction? Or do you like the focus that comes with real specific art direction? Um... You thinking about publishing something, Jeff? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just trying to imagine like what 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 would it be like to be in Stefan's shoes? And I'm sure that like from his perspective, he must work with people who give him varying levels of specificity in terms of what they're working what they're looking for. And I'm curious which of those two is yeah, a better experience I, for you. I think as long as I, I mean, I don't mind like people saying, well, you know, this this has to change and that has to change. I don't mind if I think that, you know, like the, 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 the asks make sense to me. Um, sure. Uh, sometimes you can be in a situation where somebody is just like, well, I, I, I don't know what I want, but I don't want that. Oh. And that, that's kind of a, a hard, you know, bag to kind of tear your way out of yeah uh, it's not a very good metaphor but it'll have to do you have not annoyed me thorin <laughs> and, and thorin did the audience hear that question so so thorin asked how much he had annoyed stefan mm -hmm. with his commissions um and thorin laughed as he said that and stefan said that he did not annoy him all i know is i'm watching this go on and I'm absolutely positive that if I had this talent, I would never get anything else done because <laughs> yeah. this is all I would do. I mean, seriously, to have this kind of capability, I, you know, to be able to take a thought from my head and put it out on paper like that, I that's it. That's all that I would be words. able to do. Yeah, I can't do that with words. I don't know how you do it with art. <laughs> Yeah, and it's also funny to me that he's like, "Oh, and this is just me, just like doodling for my yeah. own entertainment." And I'm like, "This could, this could, this this could be in a book." Yeah, and this would take me years to do, and I would like, it's like, "Oh, just doodling." Took him years too, according yeah. to Doug. Right? That's Doug's <laughs> famous saying. If you ever ask Doug how long it took him to do a painting, he'll tell you thirty years. Yes, I, I learned that early on. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Wait, so is, Doug yeah. gives you an intent, an intentionally um, difficult answer? <laughs> Doug being difficult. Yeah, imagine what? that. What? 
<laughs> the, the first very the first Gary Con that I met he and Joseph at uh, must have been twelve I think uh, two thousand twelve. Uh, he and I went to lunch down in uh, Lake Geneva one day, and I made the mistake of asking him. You know, I said, you know, so for you know one of those uh, paintings that he did, one of those pieces of art, how long did it take? And he said thirty years. Now, fortunately, Doug and I were sitting over lunch, so he it wasn't just like a throwaway line because I could follow up and say, well, what do you mean by that? And that's when he explained to me what that answer means. Yeah. Um, you know, it's all the training and all the practice and all the whatever. So it, it made sense to me. So I've stopped doing that in like all forms. I don't ask anybody who does stuff like writing or, or art or music, how long it takes them. Um, because it is a culmination of all of that, all of that time. It is, but there's also an answer like, oh, this drawing took me 15 minutes or this the drawing took me a couple hours. Like, <laughs> and that's still interesting. So like to me, it's fascinating. Because <laughs> to me, it's fascinating that Stefan can do this drawing this yeah. fast because yeah. in my mind, this would have taken like at least 90 minutes to get to where we're yeah. at. And it's fascinating to me that it hasn't. We do have a I mean, question in the chat uh, for Stefan. Sorry to interrupt. Um, that's okay. Does, does being an artist professionally ever ruin your desire to draw for fun? Uh, yes, uh, because you um, part of part of the problem, of course, is always, you know, like if you do anything for for a living, you kind of feel like you should be earning your living while you're doing it. Um, it's anything that becomes a job sometimes yeah. can get difficult. You know, like I, I guess if you're a fireman or something, you might enjoy, you know, kind of the adventure of it, but it's also a job, you know, and you got to show up and some days you don't, you don't have a, a single inspired idea. Sure. Those days, those days can be rough, but it's like if you're a dermatologist at a dinner party, you don't want to have random strangers showing you the, your their rashes and asking and asking you what it is. It's like leave like you want if you want to make an appointment with me, fine, but like I'm not on the clock. I'm not on the yes. clock. Yes, yes, and Jeff, now you've revealed why my lifelong dream of being a dermatologist <laughs> went Never down in flames. <laughs> Just... Oh man. Couldn't get. Uh, we'll actually be right next with uh we're right back with a new guest uh in a minute. Keep enjoying the art. <laughs>
everyone. We are here with our very next uh, guest, who is very special, and I'm very excited that we got a few moments of his time. The Dark Master himself, Joseph Goodman. Happy holidays. Good to have you. Nothing says Christmas like the Dark Master. Thank you, guys. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> it is fantastic. How are you in the holidays and the family and everything? Pretty good. I have two young kids, so Christmas gets particularly special when... Um, the youngest one is two and a half. And like this year, he finally registered that there's a tree with presents, which he hadn't really registered in previous years. So he's really excited. And every morning he thinks Christmas is tomorrow. Aww. So every morning he wakes up, <laughs> Christmas tomorrow. <laughs> like, no, <laughs> Got to wait a little longer. <laughs> yeah, no, it's been good. That's now, awesome. Did you get either of your children a giant ruby for Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> no, no giant ruby. Actually, what we're going to do is um, you know, because normally over Christmas, y'all go somewhere, you see relatives, and you have a week or two of vacation, and we have two weeks off from school and absolutely nothing to do, because, you know, I'm in California, and we're on lockdown, and you're not supposed to do anything, really. Um, so my older one is eight, and he's, you know, I think he, it's time to, we're going to do, keep on the borderlands. That's what we're going to do. Yes. Nice. Like, yeah, because you can do this one with, basically, because of social distancing, I can't even have other kids involved. It's going to be me and him, but like, I feel like I've heard a lot of stories of people playing this originally with like one, you know, just their other friend, like one D and one player. So I think we're going to, I'm going to convert this to DCC on the fly and just kind of run them through it, kind of a pseudo funnel. Um, and every day we'll play like an hour or two of, of you know, D and D ish, DCC ish kind of stuff. And I think that'll be his Christmas. That's, That's awesome. Amazing. That's a great Christmas if you ask me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. That's awesome, though. I'm, I always love hearing about, like, kids in gaming, and, like, it just brings me back to, like, that joy that I first had when I first started. Yeah, man, it's special. Everybody has fond memories. We were just pulling out, um, with some of the folks were emailing back and forth. Do you guys have, like, notebooks that are filled with the dungeons you, like, scribbled out, you know, when you were a young DM, like, running your first adventure? I yes. don't. Unfortunately, like, I moved so much as, so much growing up. Like by the time I graduated high school, I'd gone to 10 different schools. Almost every year wow. we were moving to a new address. So because of that, like with each move, we were constantly prioritizing what was coming with us and what wasn't. So oh, a man. lot got left behind. Wait, so D&D notebooks weren't at the top of your list? Is that what yeah, you're saying? Yeah, that seems like priorities were a little. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, there was the thing where like from 10 to 12, I was really into D&D. And then when I was 12, suddenly I was way too cool for D&D because I was now playing mm -hmm. Vampire the Masquerade. <laughs> so Dungeons and Dragons was really lame. So yeah, I started I playing Vampire the Masquerade from like 12 to 14. And then at 14, all role-playing games became, became really lame for me until I was 18. And then at 18, I was into it all again. So you know how teenagers, like they... Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I bet the Twin Peaks VHS made it, though. <laughs> <laughs> it did. And that made it every time. <laughs> the Twin Peaks VHS box set was with me all the way through my early adulthood. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> I, my, all my notebooks are, you know, DCC modules. So I've just been running modules. Uh -huh. But I do have my, my first notebook now that I'm starting to write in. So. Yeah, hold on to it. Like, it's fun to go back you know, years later, I was just reminded, I did a, I did this really cool miniature of a, a Hydra. I think it was Rao Partha. It's like this two headed, you know, solid lead, probably fatal um, Hydra with two heads. And I wanted, I remember wanting to use it when I was like eight or whatever. And so I made a monster called the sponge air heat. Um, you get it like a sponge because it would absorb the magic. It was basically a two headed dragon that absorbed magic just because I want to use this thing. And I remember <laughs> in my own adventure that was basically a rip off of Isle of Dread. So they went to an island and they fought the sponge air but I was just reminded of this when I was talking to somebody and it's so fun to think back on what, you know, what I thought was a really cool D&D adventure that I wrote a couple of years ago, maybe 20 years ago. And it turns out it might not be so good after all. But <laughs> it, it's now, fun to remember what it was like as a kid, you know? Joe, how old were you when you started playing? You know, I was trying to figure that out. I, I, I remember that I specifically remember the first game I played. Um, it must have been middle school, but I, I can't remember I, how old I was. That's was it AD&D? No, it was the, I have it back there, the, uh, it, uh, not Beck Me, before Beck Me, the Red Holmes, Holmes yeah, and uh, it was with my brother and his friend Wayne, and we played on the steps of the back porch, and we, you know, got all the rules wrong, but it was so much fun, like the way everybody does, but yeah, but I can't quite place the year. Okay, so somewhere in middle school. Probably. Yeah. I was 10, and Haley, how old were you when you first started playing? I was six. Six. And what was, <laughs> do you remember what your first game system was? 
my fr- it wasn't really a system. It was uh, I love telling this story because it's you know such a great memory in my head. My dad, I had my I had my My Little Ponies. My brother had his army figurines, and we battled them out on the playroom floor. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, and then after that, it turned into. I, I don't know what system it was, but, you know, I remember the hand sanitizer bottle that was the ogre in the dungeon. <laughs> and like I said, playing with the kids next door, they'd come over and we'd have the battle map out. And so, yeah, from six and then nine is when, D- when I first got introduced to DCC. And it has been that for the last nine years of my life, almost 10 years now. Amazing. That's yeah. a great story about the G.I. Joes versus the My Little Ponies. That's, yeah, that is. Yeah, that's really cool. I love, I love thinking about it. We used blocks as, like, barricades and stuff. It was, those are some great memories that I have. Oh, my dad said 3.5 was my first actual system. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, you know, because, like, the stories of Gygax back in the day, a lot of the DD monsters came from basically the rubber monsters he got down to the five and dime, like, which is kind of mm-hmm. like, which is, you, know, you use whatever you can find and set it up. That's yeah. just a really fun way to, it's a really fun way to do it. Yeah, and I, I'm so grateful every day that my dad decided to do that with us because it is such a big part of my life now, and I, I'm so happy about it. Good job, Dad. Yeah, he, <laughs> yeah. he did that right. <laughs> well, we'll see how my kids turn out. There's still time to go either way. So. <laughs> hey, he, got, he got it 50% because the other one has since disappeared. There's theories that I murdered him. He's still alive, I promise, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Now, Joe, did you ever take a break from gaming? Um, I took a break from role playing, but not gaming per se. I've always played either video games or computer games or miniatures games. Never got into card games. A lot of kids really got into magic back in the day, but yeah. always done. I, I guess I meant role playing. Did you, 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 you? But you did take a break from role playing for a while. Yeah, I was hardcore into Warhammer Forty Thousand for quite a while. Oh, um, and then in call, yeah, uh, yeah, I know we're laying it all on the table here. Um, and then I, <laughs> I did a lot of. Computer I'm not judging games. that. <laughs> I was really actually in college. I was a world champion video game player for a very obscure video game that nobody ever has heard of anymore. What is it? Uh, That's it's awesome. Called, it's called Bolo. Okay. Uh, it's a little game. You drive a tank around. It was one of the very first. Remember before email addresses when nobody had email addresses? I Haley do. Might not have been oh, born yet. No, but, Haley does yeah. not, but I do. <laughs> yeah, yeah no. I know. <laughs> So I started, barely, like I'm on the cusp of that. I was, I think I got my email, my first, first email address when I was like 14 or something, but. Okay. Yeah. Joe, so that's, I, that's like forever before email addresses. That's like 12 BC. They didn't have a time addresses. before email. Exactly. It's know, like exactly. when I was a child okay. and I, I found out that this. my mom had been alive before microwaves, it blew my mind. <laughs> <laughs> and then I remember being like, were cars around when you were a kid? <laughs> 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 Yeah, it's a Twitch stream. Do we have here, a special guest? Put this in guest? your ear so you can hear. Oh, yep. So we've got. Hello. This is Haven. Can you hear? This is my older son, Haven. He's the one we're going to play D and D with um, later this week. Can you hear him? Hi, okay? Haven. Okay. Hi. <laughs> How's it going, buddy? <laughs> oh, he can't hear you because hold on. Here, you're talking to him. He's got the earbuds. Okay. There you go. <laughs> can you he hear has, us now? You can talk back now if you want to say something. Oh, hello. <laughs> so, hey, how's it these going? These guys are actually well, broadcasting on Twitch, and that's Stefan. He's drawing a picture. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, do you want to tell them about maybe one of your favorite games? Uh, like Minecraft right now? Mm-hmm. I like Minecraft and um, Bloom 6 and uh, 27 other games. I'm a big Minecraft what? player. <laughs> I am I a big a Minecraft player. Yeah. Have you been to Ender Dragon before? I have, before? yeah. I have. It took a lot of work. It took a lot of time because I played Minecraft before all the the fun new updates. It took a while for me to get there. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Later on. Okay, you go downstairs to eat dinner. I'll be down in a sec, okay? Okay. Okay. He has to go eat dinner. He wants to show you his Minecraft base, so maybe we'll send you some screenshots later on. I would love to see that. Okay. I'm going to have to re-download Minecraft and I'll play with him sometime. (laughs) Yes. Oh, Joe, have you played Minecraft? <laughs> you know, I can't get into it. I've played it with him, you know, just to play it with him, but I maybe I'm too old. I can't get into it. It's not for me either. But yeah. But then again, like, you know, the whole maybe I'm too old. Like there's like there's new games that I like Among Us, I am obsessed with right oh, now. Oh, he plays that all the time. Yeah. He I love that game. game. He yeah. knows all the hacks too and all the like there's apparently a way to make sure you're always the imposter if you do <laughs> something you want. So he's always the imposter. And he basically just loves going around and killing all the other players. But that's really funny. You <laughs> might end just... up in a game with him. 
<laughs> well, and that's what's so funny about that game too is like there's all these like and there's like the chat is such a central component of it too mm-hmm. that i'm yeah. just like who am i talking is this some like random <laughs> eight-year-old or yeah. probably like- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's awesome hey if he's, yeah. if he's already enjoying killing all the other players he's on the right path to be a dm <laughs> <laughs> yes actually this was going to be the year that i was going to take him to all the local cons I, the, the barrier we have a ton of local cons that are great, but you know now they're all shut down. But like one of these days, I want to take him to the local cons, and he can do just that. Kill all the other players. Yes, that is perfect. PvP yeah. is is always an option, is what I like to say. Yes. You know, might not be written into the adventure, but everybody. yeah. If you want to yeah, kill buddy. everybody, just run a funnel. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> do you want to come say hi to the people? Yeah, help me add. Okay, I'll help you add in a minute. This is my other son. This is Pierce. He wants me to help him add. So we're gonna go. Hi, Pierce. Hi, Pierce. Can you say hi to these people? He mostly likes mm. playing in the keyboard, so we're not sure what we might get here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So he and my cats have a lot in common then. You want me to click the button? Okay, we'll click the button. Yeah, so he's a couple years out from D&D, but yes. That's awesome though. Oh, it makes me feel old when I see kids that age. <laughs> <laughs> By 18 years. <laughs> it makes me feel old too. There's a lot of aging involved in having children. I'm sure. I'm sure your dad knows all about that. I had like no gray hair until I had kids, and then it all happened. For me, that first moment where I really felt old was like because I remember I was 14 when Kurt Cobain died, and Nirvana was the center of my universe. At that <laughs> oh no, time. man! Oh no! Yeah. So then realizing that there were adults who were who who were walking this world that were alive after he died blew my mind. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's and true. So what? What's eighteen plus ninety four? That would have been like two thousand six. I was realizing that. So I was. It was fourteen years ago that I started feeling old. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so guys, we're officially starting dinner here, and as you can see, the chaos is erupting. So Daddy, I. Can I show them? Um, well, it turns out Jeff here actually said he plays Among Us, so maybe you can kill him sometimes. <laughs> hey, Daddy. Yes. But Daddy, I play Among Us too. I know. That's what I'm saying. You might have been in a game with him. Yeah. Tell yeah. him he's sus. Sus. He's sus. Red sus. <laughs> yeah, tell him that red is sus. Red is. He says red is sus. I don't know what that is. I got red the earbuds on, so you can't hear it all. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, it was very nice to have you. We'll let you go have dinner with your family. Thanks, you guys. Uh, this is a really fun you. special. I'm gonna keep watching after dinner. I'll tune back in and keep watching. So, okay. thanks, guys. Okay, I'll thanks. talk to you later. Bye. Okay. Bye. We have now switched uh, our our drawings, um, but that was absolutely adorable. I cannot get over that. It makes me. I'm gonna run a buy kids for kids game one of these days. So so good. So get your kids in the lineup, and I will one of these days take the time to do that. <laughs> now, Stefan, do you have ah? Stefan, do you have either furry kids or little human kids? Um, I have two dogs. Two dogs, amazing. So we are about to be joined by another special guest. Should we go ahead and fade to black? Okay, you've got some more music coming up.
are back with our next and final guest, the amazing Michael Curtis. So happy to see you in these holiday times. I am so happy to be here for the <laughs> holiday party. Yeah. So <laughs> how are your holiday plans? <laughs> oh, in, in, the, in the year that shall not be named? Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> in the year of no travel and no visiting. <laughs> yeah. Well, normal... Normally, uh, we uh, some friends of mine, they have a big holiday shindig, uh, which involves a, a bunch of us getting together and you know, just hanging out and we end up playing One Night Werewolf and uh, we, uh, we play a, a whole bunch of games and it devolves into a big Jenga contest at the end of the night. Um, but, uh, but that's not happening this year. So, uh, so this year, my holiday tradition is pretty much watching the Lord of the Rings trilogy, which I try to do every year. So every oh, year around this time. That so. is a great way. I'm binging Star Wars with my best friend one of these days. <laughs> Wait, now, like, like all 12 now or whatever. We <laughs> yep. We are going to start at the first one and she just had back surgery. So she's in uh, recovery right now and can't really leave. So we are going to sit down with her older brother. We're just going to watch them all because... I got lucky and my best friend is a nerd. So I've got questions for both of you then. So for Michael Curtis, I want to know, are you doing theatrical or extended cuts? And Haley, are you doing these in chrono in, in internal chrono chronological order or shooting order? Starting with Michael Curtis. Theatrical? I'm, theatrical. I'm, not, I'm not sure what that word means. <laughs> well, the theatrical cuts were, I think, about two hours for each movie. And then the extended cuts were maybe like th a little over three hours for each no movie. such thing as two hours of a Lord of the Rings movie. That's like, <laughs> that's like that rumor there was like a Highlander 2. You know, that's something. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. You're watching the extended cuts. You're I'm doing watching, the full like 11 hours, whatever it is. No, I, yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm just watching the features. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to do also all of the, uh, the specials, uh, the, uh, the, you know, the special material, um, which, which I have done in the past, but <laughs> not, not, not for Christmas, no. <laughs> no. Um, and but, Haley? Yeah, I'm not really sure yet because my best friend isn't that much of a nerd, so we might go in number order but I might try and coax her into doing the actual chronological order from the movies. I'm not really sure yet. It is up to her in the end because she's the one with Disney Plus. <laughs> okay. All right. So are we getting are we getting Rogue uh, Rogue One and Han and Solo in here too? And I assume so. Oh, okay. I, like I said, we have hours upon hours of days worth of time, so we are just going to sit down and watch. Just cut. Just get rid of all. Of, get get rid of all of the dross and just go for the gold and just watch the hol the uh, the 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 holiday special and the Ewok movie and that's it. That's all you need. <laughs> that's all we're doing. That'll sum yeah. it all up. <laughs> all you need is hang out with Chew Chewie's family. Mm -hmm. Hang out with B. Arthur. <laughs> what else yeah. do you need? Yeah, and, no. And not to... one but two Ewok made for television movie. <laughs> <laughs> Those I haven't seen. I have seen the Star Wars Christmas special. I've not seen the, the Ewok movies. Uh, if, you, if there's ever somebody you hate, um, uh, you know, uh, track them down and watch it with them. No. <laughs> <laughs> I have not seen the much talked about Christmas special. I'm going to have to watch that because when I started planning this, everyone was like, have you seen it? And I was like, no, but it sounds horrible and I must see it now. Oh, it is horrible. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And and I will say I am glad to have watched it, but it was not fun watching it. Yeah. My dad told me he, when he was young, he waited and waited for it and then watched it and was like, this is, this yeah. is it. <laughs> but I'm now yeah. realizing that in all of the Christmas talk we've done and people have been asking me what I'm doing for Christmas, I haven't mentioned that of course I'm going to watch Pee Wee's Christmas special because yes. every year my partner and I watch Pee Wee's Christmas special and it's incredible, especially the Grace Jones moment where she comes out and sings, is it Little Drummer Boy? Yeah, where she comes out and sings Little Drummer Boy. It's incredible. I, oh, I can't go wrong with the Pee Wee movies. <laughs> Yeah. No. Um, since I have all access to all of you Star Wars people, do, do any of you have strong opinions on whether or not uh, Peter Cushing should be CGI or not? I, hmm. I, I, you know what? It's 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 kind of beyond me at this point. You know, it's a, it's I have gone through my Star Wars divorce, so whatever anybody wants to do is fine by me. So. <laughs> <laughs> Well, then, in, in general, uh, do you have issues with people taking deceased actors and turning them into CGI characters? Does that bother you, Mr. Michael Curtis, or are you like, whatever? 
Um, you know what? It, um, I actually dug seeing um, Peter Cushing in the Rogue One movies, the like computer animated, you know, because I was like, okay, it's the closest I'm going to get to more Peter Cushing. And being a fan of the Hammer movies, I was like, okay, I'm more, you know, if we get, you know, I, I'm fine with that, to be quite honest. Um, you know, I, I think, I think probably because he had been dead long enough, uh, where <laughs> if they did the thing with like Carrie Fisher, uh, I think it would be a little bit, you know, less tasteful if they had, you know, they had gone with the original plan and they, had, you know, because I just started watching the, I guess the, the whatever, the ninth one, the, the, the last of the, the last of the latest trilogy. And on second viewing, it's like, oh yeah, you can tell that this was not intent. This was just like whatever footage we have of Carrie, we're just going to write the dialogue around whatever she is saying and just try to make it work out. Like, yeah, this is really bad. This is, uh, you know, just just from like a just from a dialogue point of view, it's, like, it's yeah. like it's like nobody would actually say that except we need something that Carrie Fisher would respond to with that saying. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it's it's always because you can't replace that. You know, any actor you get to replace that, no one's gonna respect or appreciate. So it's like, do we cut them out of the movies or do we try and make it work? And it's that uncanny valley thing too, where it's like, it's real. Like this, the 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 technology they have for it is really, really, really good. It's like ninety nine percent there, but that one percent that it's off is really kind of unsettling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would agree with that. I remember Peter Cushing just looked really weird to me. Yeah, the he eye. too perfect or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah or absolutely. something weird. Now, um, so Michael, I'm curious, if we were going to turn one of your DCC adventures into a movie, which one are we adapting? Oh, God. Um so, so, so a movie. Sorry, sorry, sorry. A I'm, movie. I, I, yeah, I've we're got, making got, our first DCC got, movie, and it's gonna be one of your adventures. It's gonna be one of my adventures. Okay. Um. Let's see. Oh man. What have I written again? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let me um, think. You wrote "Sailors on the Starless Sea," yeah. "The <laughs> One Who Watches <laughs> from <laughs> Below," oh, and oh, "Hole oh, in the Sky." Oh, I think oh, those oh, were your three big ones. No. Um. <laughs> probably. Let's see. Um, well, I mean, I mean, well, the, the chain coffin is a series and that's, you know, so we can't, we can't do that. So, um, you can start a franchise. Yeah, that always yeah, works out. I got 90 minutes. So, um, so I'm going to go croaking fame. Oh, I'm going to go, you know, sword and sauce, like a, a 19, but it has to be shot like a 1980s version of fantasy. It's got to be shot like in, in Italy with like, you know, like <laughs> coming Italian actors you've never heard of and fading American actors will you never see again. And, you know, <laughs> it's gotta be like, like the exterior of the temple has gotta be like, you know, like a, a foam miniature shot, you know, like a back painting. Yeah, that, yeah, that's that's my answer. That's you know, it's the only way and, to do it. And the and the big the big frog is like a Harry Howard's Harry Howard's and um, you know, stop action, you know, thing they gotta fight. You know, clearly blue right. <laughs> and, and and copious use of the Star filter. Oh, yes, very much so. <laughs> <laughs> Although somebody in our audience is voting for Intrigue at the Court of Chaos. Yes. Um, that could be done, uh, but I would shoot it in like a 1960, like I would get like a like a like an avant-garde French director uh to shoot that in like the 1960s or like a full technicolor palette. Um oh get Jordan, what was it? Get uh who am I thinking of? Uh, J- Jodorowsky, uh, J- oh, um, Alejandro Jodorowsky. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. Mexican though, not French. No, he's Chilean. Yeah, but isn't he? He's... Oh, he's Chilean. Yeah, Chilean. I think so. I okay. Think so I'm a, or half Chilean. Or I'm. I can't even pronounce his as name. I, as I as I furiously Google. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah i was just i was just chilean you are correct yeah i only know that because i was just reading the making of alien recently so and uh, (laughs) they 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 talk about him so um so yeah yeah so yeah so yeah uh so yeah uh so uh, intrigue of the court of chaos done 1960 psychedelic pattern or uh the croaking train done as a 1980s sword and sorcery movie Nice. <laughs> those are my answers <laughs> i love That's it awesome. and looking i i see why um because the holy mountain and santa sangre are mexican films yes that he is a chilean director mm-hmm. okay that is where my confusion came in. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So, Michael, I have to ask, are you working on anything new? Anything? Uh... Well, right now. The better question is, how many things are you working yeah, on right true. now? Yeah, that's true. Okay, so um, I, I kind of have took like a four-month sabbatical, sort of, technically, because uh, I'm, I'm doing, I, I kind of have a, a, like a normal day job again for a while. Mm. I'm working on a grant, uh, so I have about 14 months doing that. So I'm, you know, I get up in the morning and I commute to work and do all the rest of that stuff. So I, I told Joe, I was like, I need like four months to figure out how to do this again and figure out what my free time is before I yeah. you know, do anything. Uh, but, so, but now with 2021 coming up, uh, like that four months is now kind of over. And I've moved on to the phase in the grant where I've done most of the work that I had to do on the ground. And now for like the next four months is something I can do at home. So I, I gained like two hours again out of my life because I don't have to do a commute. Um, so mm -hmm. so uh, right now it's kind of like, okay, there's Lankmar phase two, um, you know, and, and I'm gonna have a I'm gonna have a finite amount of time, so uh, I'm kind of blocking stuff out. Like, okay, this is what this is what I know we want to cover. This is what I want to include. Uh, this is what I'm going to write on this, and this is what we're going to have to bring other people in to write on this one. You know, so, um, so that's that's really what we are right now, kind of blocking stuff out. Um, you know, uh, depending on what free time comes. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I don't relate. <laughs> yeah, if anything happens, um, you know, there's some there's some other things that I would like to do. Uh, you know, I've got some personal projects that I'm kind of working on. Um, you know, I, but uh, but technically, I'm just warming up to kind of get back to work. Is mm. basically where we are right now. And we Judge some... Jen in all caps is saying yeah. phantasmagorias. <laughs> yeah, that's one of those things. That I think the recently, like a post turned up on Facebook about that, and it was just you know like okay, it's just you know the, where has that been? So you know, so I, I and I had made a comment, you know that that you know okay, you know because Haley was in like the first year I started playtesting it, and just yeah. for my own edification, I went back and I looked on the like the dusky the dusty cobweb parts on my hard drive. And I found the original document for that. And the year on that is 2014. Oh, gosh. So, Gen Con 2014, that's when I started running. So you were like 11, 12, 12. years old at that point? 12. If it was Gen Con, probably 11. Yeah. Yeah. So it's yeah. like that. Every time <laughs> Seven, like, eight years. <laughs> I, still have a, I still have the image of you and your brother at the table. So every time I'm like... Haley's in college now, and I still haven't done that. <laughs> Those games are so like in my head still. I can't every time. I love them. I can't wait for them to come out eventually. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but on my own defense, I also looked and saw when DCC Lankmar started, and that was 2014. So what yeah, happened? Really? I was working on the Four Phantasmagoria, and yeah. Gen Con happened, and that's when we had all the Goodman crew got together and said, "Okay, we're going to do. We're going. We have a license to do Lankmar." And then we started talking about it. And I was like, oh, I get to be part of Lankmar. And then uh, we got done. And uh, I had said, okay, we should, we need to do, we should think of this and this. And I have this stuff and look at this and everything like, and Joe was like, well, I guess we found lead writer on that. So, um, <laughs> so that was, <laughs> that was five years of my life. So uh, I really didn't do anything with the uh, Phantasmagoria uh, for I fun. I didn't realize that Lankmar started that long ago. Yeah. I mean, because there was a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. just develop I mean, I think, Doug and Harley and I, we were on like a secret Google Plus group. It was just like the three of us. And we spent like months just hashing out ideas like, okay, this is what we need to do. This is what we're not going to do. This is, you know, like our goal yeah. is not. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I remember that secret group. <laughs> <laughs> so That explains why it's so amazing though. Cause I, Linkmar is like my favorite game to be in, to run, to be a part of. Like I said, the Linkmar map is going up in my room after christmas i'm i love it so you guys yeah. did a great job with it the, the the crew that we had working on that was very good and everybody was you know everybody was contributing on it really loved the setting and you know it was i mean we could have done that as a cash grab uh but we didn't you know we yeah. just we had the time to do it so we said like from day one harley doug and i were like okay we're a lot of like we're going to be like the fourth or fifth person to take a stab at you know at fritz library stuff and we're going to get it right this time Mm -hmm. uh, because um because there's been some there's been some stuff which has not been very good um we are our, our kind of our goal was to get the original um first edition gray cover city adventure like that was our like if we can do something as good as this we'll be happy and uh and i think we succeeded you know some yeah. people say we might have done better i'm just saying we <laughs> the mark 
Oh, I, you know, this, we had a good crew. I'm very happy. I'm very happy how it turned out. And I'm very happy to be part of it. And, uh, and I'm looking forward to phase two of it. Um, but, you know, but uh, especially since a lot of the hard work is already done. <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> no, I, I love it. You guys did a great job with it. So that's, so you guys heard it here. What's next from Michael Curtis will be link more two. And, and my goal, my goal is to get the four Fantasmal Glory out before you graduate. So, um, so you got any, like accelerated classes or anything. <laughs> Three and a half years. All right. <laughs> I, I'm not saying take five years. I'm just saying, <laughs> two, you know, I'm saying <laughs> maybe go to grad school. Exactly. Get your PhD. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Grad school, you know. Doctorate. <laughs> Dr. Haley. Doctor, oh, could you imagine? Dual <laughs> masters. You know, I'm going to be threatening my boyfriend that I'm going to get my doctorate. I'm going to make him call me Dr. Jeff. <laughs> I would never know when my parents would have to call me Dr. Sketch. Like, there's no way that I would let anyone call me Haley after that. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't know how much trash talking you want to do, but Michael Curtis, is there anything that you saw in any other um, Fritz Leiber RPG stuff that just like, you were like, what the hell there, is this? There was, was just some of the stuff that was like from the second edition D&D stuff. I'm not saying all of it. But there was a lot of splat books that they that TSR put out of that, mm-hmm. and I was looking, you know, I, I before I got involved in Lankwar license, I was like, oh, I love the Lankwar stories. I want to collect them all, so I collect them all. So I read a lot of them, and there was some stuff in there like, did they even read any of these stories? Like <laughs> none of this, like this is does not fit at all. Like I think there was there was one, and and, and I'm just going back from memory because I, I literally tried to put every all of it out of my head when we started. <laughs> I think it I'm sorry. I'm trying to make you remember traumatic uh, <laughs> moments from your it. past, but I mean, we, we've done it. We put we put out the box set, so you know. Uh, <laughs> but I think there was there was one. It was like there was an encounter with like a knight in full plate armor, and his name was Richard, and he was like, and it wasn't like he wasn't like a time traveler. He wasn't like from another dimension. He was like a like a citizen of Lankmar. I'm like, what the hell is this? You know, it's like this is. This doesn't fit anything of the setting. This is nothing like any of the stories or anything. And, you know, it's just, um, it was, there was just, it was just little things like that. I was like, this, yeah. this literally looks like the big, the big problem was that there was stuff in there that looked like it could have been from any, any generic fantasy setting whatsoever. And it had it lacked, it lacked, it had none of the flavor that was like more. And it was just like, was this just something that was sitting on a slush pile and we needed to, you know, pad out a word count or something? Yeah. You know. Someone was sitting there like, I want to put a knight in the story. So we're going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> right. Or like, we've already got this adventure, but we have a Lankmar thing to put out. Let's just go ahead and call this thing a Lankmar adventure. Yeah. No. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's not, there were, it was just basically stuff like that. It was, and you know, it was, I mean, uh, so the Mongoose had a license. Mongoose put like, I, they had a world book which they put out, uh, which is actually pretty good. I still like. I got rid of most of my like Mark stuff, but I got rid of that because it was it, there was enough flavor text in there, and I'm like, okay, this is this is pretty cool. And I know at one point we we're going to have to deal like outside of Lankmar, and I just wanted to say, okay, what have they done with it? And just so I make sure I don't go down the same path and stuff. But um, but yeah, but it's usually a lot of the like if if you're a completist, get what you want. But if you're like, okay, if you see like the second edition Lankmar stuff on you know for sale you know if you have money to burn sure but you know if it's just like you know if it comes down to you know picking up an adventure by say you know me or picking up like you know a second edition ps artist and you you know you you know where to go yeah <laughs> i hope <laughs> we do have a question in the chat that says can we get a preview of what we plan to run for spawn of cyclops first oh, off spawn uh, of cyclops the- i have to say yeah, so uh, one of the personal projects I've been working on is I am uh, doing a thing called the Brutal Lands, and it's a t- it's a DCC variant, um, which is it's it's my barbarian centric uh, take on DCC. So uh, I read Beowulf once a year, every year. So I wanted to do something that was kind of like you know Dark Ages, Iron Age, you know Western European crazy Vikings, you know Celts, German tribes, you know people painted blue running around. Um, so I've been doing kind of a I've been working on that on and off for a while, and um, so I've got some different takes on how to do some of the classes, how to do some of the magic, um, you know uh, how to do mighty deeds because it's all going to be barbarian centric. So uh, let's just say warriors have a big presence in there. I've got some new kind of customized classes uh, for it. 
and uh you know so i've been i've been working on that uh and been posting stuff on my patreon for that uh we've been talking about putting that together and um i need to get a play test like enough material to play test by spawn of cyclops con so that's what two months uh so it's yeah it's like what end of february or something around there yeah, yeah. uh do we so, know the exact days yet I believe it's February like 26th and 27th ish. Uh, yeah. They just missed my birthday. That 26, 27, 28. Okay. So the last, th the la yeah, the end of February. So, so that's, uh, that's probably what I'm going to be doing. Uh, you know, I won't have new like Mars stuff ready by then. I don't think, uh, although there was stuff that I play tested back the last time we had a Gen Con, um, uh, I might dust that off uh, depending on what goes on. So, you know, so, so do you, well, I, the, the one good thing is that I do work for a, uh, the, the grant I'm working at is for, is a, for a university. So I have technically, you know, winter break. Uh, so uh, I have some free time, which I can be uh, putting stuff together on a frantic pace for Spawn of Cyclops Con. So nice. have, have you read the new Beowulf translation from last year? Um, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the one by, was it Mary or, um, not the, yeah, I just, I just heard it starts off with saying, bro. Yes. Yeah. No, I have not read that. I have that. Um, you know, I, but I have not read it yet though. That's the, uh, that's kind of the, uh, uh, it's, I, I, I can't say for sure, but I've heard that is a very interesting, um, kind of. Uh, pro-feminist take on uh, on Beowulf, so I'm interested in seeing how that works. Uh, yeah, I'm interested in it too. But right? one of my friends is a he's big into Beowulf, and he really likes it. Oh, good. That's good. That's good. You know, yeah. I, I, could, I could see where that be something where if you were a big Beowulf fan, you'd be very dismissive of that. But uh, yeah, well, he thinks he thinks that they got like the, the spirit of the original story. Mm -hmm. But they've, you know, put it into modern language. So, okay. you know, the thing with the guy yelling "bro" is because he's basically kind of a drunken frat boy character, you know, <laughs> saying, "Dude, <laughs> it was awesome, bro, <laughs> bro." <laughs> well, I mean, like, like I said, it's it's on the shelf, um, you know. So uh, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe I'll read that over the break then. Jeff, do you have any? I know you're busy with GoadCon right now, but do you have any Spawn of Cyclops? Plans? Nothing. Um, I'm I'm doing GoadCon right now because I have five weeks off between my two semesters. But no, by the end of February, I'll be back into full time school, two part time jobs, an internship, an eBay store, two podcasts, and two weekly games. I'm between all of those things, <laughs> yeah, I I will not have time to 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 run anything for 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 um spawn of cyclops yeah wow <laughs> how about you Haley I um that is the weekend I'm going back to school but I believe uh I will be helping Harley with a tournament that weekend mm -hmm. um but I would like to say spawn of cyclops I feel a little personally attacked the colors are pink and blue which are the colors I dyed my hair one of the first years I was in gaming and um I just feel like it's a little too spot on describing me <laughs> spot of cyclops with the pink and blue color scheme uh, you know what mm. <laughs> I, I, I have no inside information one way or the other but i wouldn't be surprised if somewhere along the lines of like you know <sighs> haley has been around since you know, technically kind of like the bride you know she's like she's the spawn of the cycle you know since, yeah because uh, you're you're you know you're like i don't know i don't i don't know i you know, your dad and I are, you know, comparatively roughly the same age, so we're old men. Uh, so, you know, so I, but, and, and I feel like, you know, like Jeff is, Jeff is like, Jeff, Jeff is, you know, younger than me, older than you. So, you know, so I'm going to call <laughs> dad and I, you know, first generation, and then Jeff can be like the second generation, you can be third generation. So there you go. So. I'd call that fair. <laughs> but yeah, that is, I think I'm going to help with the tournament. I don't have anything planned. I, mm. I saw the Star Wars holiday special on television live. So, you know, so that ages <laughs> me, you know. So that, was <laughs> that was my dad. He's not. right there with you. Yeah, no, I have not. And I think, think Stefan is the only other people who was, who, was, who, was, who, was, who was alive at that point to be doing this, right? I, in theory, I could have watched the moon landing. But <laughs> I, I don't know if I did. <laughs> no. well, Nixon was I probably slept through it. 
I was I was born Nixon was still president. So yeah. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I I uh I what I should say I watched the alleged moon landing. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh no. Exactly. Oh, because we all kidding. know that the just earth kidding. is flat. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clearly. <laughs> yeah, no. I love being the age marker of DCC. Oh, Haley's in college now, so that means, you know, <laughs> everything is old. Well, I mean, we were old before you were in college. Or at least, well, I'm sorry, I was old <laughs> before you were in college, but, you know. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so. it's fun. It's fun to look back at young Haley and go, oh, wow. <laughs> well, well, you know, I mean... <laughs> There's, I mean, like, like how old is Evie now? I mean, Evie, yeah, Evie, she's, I think yeah. she's 14 now. Yeah. So, you know, and then, so that is, oh, I'm not even the youngest anymore. No, you're not. I'm sorry. That's, That's it. crazy. I'm old now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep. I haven't seen her. Haley's Evie. Gash, gotta, the old maid. Yep. I got to reach out to Evie and talk to her soon. See what she's up to. <laughs> tell her, I think, tell I think her we follow her. each other on Instagram. <laughs> Tell her to stop growing up and making me old. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and uh, on that lovely note, talking about age and how old everyone is. Exactly, is our time. impending mortality. <laughs> yep. And how all things must end. <laughs> yep, all good things must come to an end, my reign of terror included. Um, thank you everyone who joined watching the Twitch and on the actual call. I appreciate all of you. We wish you happy holidays, Merry Christmas, happy Hanukkah, um, all of the following, whatever you celebrate, happy holidays all. Thank you. Yeah, kisses. <laughs> See you all soon. See you guys two, Sunday. 2021 be a damn sight better than 2020. Yes. Let say, yes. Oh, That's hoping right for a on. much less interesting year. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs>